What is going on everybody? Today I would like to walk you through my brand new 2023 Hughes Redfisher 21 powered by a 300 Yamaha there. I hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the new sled. <laughs> One thing that makes this boat so great, especially from a guide perspective, is the width. The beam of the boat is eight foot, six inch, and the boat's only 21 feet long. So it's really an ultra wide boat and it holds that profile almost all the way to the bow. So you get a huge deck in the front and you get a huge casting deck in the back for fishing. Like a lot of times we fish off the back of the boat. <laughs> The boat also holds 50 gallons of fuel and uh, at cruise you get about a four and a half mile per gallon cruising speed that's going about 30 to 32 miles an hour which is plenty fast for me and uh, I mean you do the math that's almost 200 miles on a single tank of fuel so it's got quite the range especially for the guys that are fishing in the Everglades National Park running all the way out to those wrecks running all the way around you, you guys that fish out there you know what I'm talking about you run from one side to the other it's got the range to do that and uh, the boat rides incredible. It's got a nice, almost like a Carolina flare for the bow. And um, I've taken this boat offshore in like three foot waves and it, it surprisingly does amazingly well. Um, it, I had a couple pathfinders before this and uh, I've got nothing bad to say about the ride of this boat. It really blew me away and it's super impressive. As uh, maybe some of you guys that have an older version of maybe the Maverick Master Angler 21 or the Hughes uh, 21 Redfish or the older model, some of those boats had rod lockers here where you actually would lock the rods into the hatch. And uh, that's great and all, but you lose what's called the toe kick. So you would walk in and you basically just have a boxed in area and it's not real comfortable to walk around. Um, these are super wide gunnels to walk on and you can store about five to six rods per side depending on how much you want to kind of tuck them in there but really five rods is about the maximum you want to use and you've got the rod storage right here on both sides it's nice and what's great about it is it's tucked in so tight on the inside that when you're walking by you're not kicking any of your reels on your ankles like I've done that in the past on some other boats um, it's just a really great design and um, and Hughes and in this particular boat um, they just they really knocked it out of the park I, nobody wants to store a bunch of rods and then be walking into them All right, so this is something really cool right here. This is the Minn Kota 112 pound thrust, 36 volt trolling motor with the automatic deploy, which you guys just saw there. Um, this thing runs off of three Dakota lithium batteries. I've got the 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries in a series. And uh, I've run this trolling motor for the last five days. I've, I've had it on the boat for about a month now, but I haven't charged those batteries in about five days and it's still running strong. The batteries are showing a high level of voltage still. And um, I, I think this trolling motor is, is crucial for any inshore fisherman. Uh, the spot lock feature is great. And this particular trolling motor on this boat, I think it's powerful enough. I've had it down in some really strong current in Miami, like on those full moon tides, and it stays right in with the current. And I mean, with those Dakota lithium batteries, you can run, I mean, for probably two days in that kind of current. So out here, we don't have much current on the lake, but um, yeah, that's my trolling motor setup. Oh, also, if you guys notice this cord here, I actually have a live scope transducer on the front of the trolling motor there. That's a part of the Garmin unit or part of the Garmin family. Um, and basically I can just turn the trolling motor with my remote and pick up a bunch of those fish on the bottom. If you guys don't, don't know what live scope is, maybe we'll do that in another video. All right, so this boat, like I said, has a huge front deck. It's good for fly fishing. I could put a casting deck up here, which is an option. Um, I mean, or it's just wide open. There's no lip on the edge, which is nice. I prefer that. Nothing to, to step on or trip on. And it's got two gigantic hatches. Next, time to dive into these hatches. Pretty cool. 
A lot of space, big anchor hatch there. I've got an anchor in there. You should always have an anchor in your boat for safety. And uh, if you ever book a charter with me, you can ask me about my anchor story. Um, what's really cool about these hatches in particular, um, Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, they all use Gemlux hardware. And these are those friction hinges. So you can really put it anywhere you want and it'll stay right about until it gets to that teetering point there. So you can just open it up, it'll stay. No uh, gas shocks, like some of the older boats had those gas shocks and they would rust out. Um, really nice, great hardware, very easy to close. We're gonna go to this big monstrosity of a hatch next. Now you have the friction hinges and you have two gas shocks because this hatch probably weighs about 100 pounds if I had to take a guess. This has enough space. I keep my life jackets in there, first aid kit, and today we've just got a bunch of regular fishing stuff in there. It's not real pretty to look in because we're actually using the boat, but um, yeah. And once again, nice, easy, very easy to close, just like that. And that is the front deck. Um, next part of the boat I want to talk about is this live well. Um, it's a standalone unit and I use it when I'm on Lake Ida. I catch my own bait and uh, what's cool about this live well is I didn't have to drill any holes for this live well. It's freestanding and it circulates its own water and that's what I use to keep the shad alive. I catch threadfin shad on this lake and I only really have this live well on the boat when I'm fishing Lake Ida. When I'm fishing the Everglades and Miami and all of the other places, I have a 35 quart cooler that fits in its place with a couple of tie downs on each side. And um, you know, I'm glad that this console doesn't have a molded in seat so that I'm able to put this live well here and it's really out of the way. All right, the business end of the boat here, the console. This is where I spend most of my time. And uh, one thing that really I think makes this boat is the electric steering that's built into the Yamaha. So we've got the electric steering helm here. It's a, it is a tilt helm, so you can adjust the steering wheel to your liking. Um, got the typical uh, blinker switch style for the jack plate. Great, easy to run it up and down, especially when you're running through some shallow water. I opted for a Garmin unit. This is the 1243 XSV with live scope. So on the front of the trolling motor, I actually have my live scope transducer and it just makes it really easy to catch bait, find tarpon in the spring. Um, I mean, really, you can do so much with live scope. So that is why I went with the Garmin is simply for the live scope. And it's got a nice flush screen that actually matches the Yamaha gauge quite nicely. Um, Fly-by-wire binnacle uh, for the Yamaha, very sensitive, very user-friendly to use. You've got your regular trim tab switches just above that, makes it nice and easy to adjust while you're running. And then you've got your uh, switch panel here with your key switch, kill switch, and your 12 volt, you know, DC receptacle there. And uh, everything's just tightly packed into one nice convenient package. One of my very most favorite parts of this boat, I know that didn't make much sense, is how they did this bench seat. And uh, you think, oh, it's just a bench seat. How special can it be? Well, what's great about it, number one is it's got this optional backrest, which I find very comfortable to sit and drive. Um, but more importantly, the way they did the cushions and the upholstery is so, I mean, it's, it's the next level. Uh, you can open in each individual hatch without having to take the cushion off. So in a typical older boat, you'd have to fold the cushion forward and then you could open up the hatch and then you'd have this cushion in your way so you couldn't access the hatch easily. May not sound like a big deal until you have one of these things. So this, it basically folds the whole thing, each side opens individually, and then you've got a big spacious dry storage area right here at your fingertips. Once again, all Gemlux hardware on all this stuff makes it nice and easy to close and lock. And that's that. Very simple, very comfortable, nice and soft, durable. This is uh, some kind of faux leather that they use and uh, it stays clean. Being that it is white on a charter boat, those two things usually don't go together well, um, but it stays very clean. I don't know, whatever kind of coating they put on it, uh, it holds up great. 
All right, so it's a little dirty. I uh, had a morning trip today, and uh, but the biggest and most important part of this boat is this motor. It's a 300 Yamaha. Uh, it's got the new built-in steering here. That's what this kind of bracket thing is. It's electric steering, super smooth. And uh, this 300 will get this boat up to about 65 miles an hour. Um, it's super stable at 65. I've only done it one time. I don't really run my boat fast, uh, especially with clients. Most they'll ever see is probably 35 miles an hour. But um, yeah, this is the powerhouse. And uh, yeah, Gary, let's fire it up. All right, last but not least, this massive aft deck. And uh, it's great because we still have our bench seat up and you still have, this is probably like, I don't know, it's the whole width of the boat and probably about four feet long. It's got these gigantic hatches here. We've got our house battery right here. Battery switch in the back. Again, friction hinges, which are fantastic in my opinion. I think, I think those are really a game changer for any boat, honestly. Um, we've got a big live well in the center here. This is gonna be uh, about 30 gallons, 35 gallons, I think. Don't quote me on that. Again, friction hinges, very nice. One thing, it, now I've had a Maverick, well, I've had Maverick and Pathfinder in my, in my life for the last probably 15 years. And one of the biggest things that I didn't like about that boat in the past was the access to the bilge. So what I'm standing on here is a huge, and I mean huge, bilge access. I mean, you can access all of your live well pumps, a lot of the wiring for those live well pumps, and you've got three gigantic seacocks. Should anything ever break, you can just shut them off, and it's super easy access to get into this hole. And uh, again, friction hinges, I love that. I think it's great. On the other side, and then last but not least, we've got a pretty good size release well. You could easily keep a slot size snook uh, or big redfish in here if you wanted to, especially for you tournament guys. You can keep those big redfish in here with no problem. There's plenty of circulation. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's really fit for exactly what I needed as a guide and uh, really as an angler. I mean, they really knocked it out of the park with this boat. Overall, I think this boat is extremely versatile. I've taken it offshore. I've taken it to Lake Okeechobee to go crappie fishing. Lake Okeechobee can get pretty rough too. It's pretty much an inland ocean. Um, I've had it out peacock fishing. I think anybody that is thinking about buying a boat in the 21 foot range, whether it be a bass boat, a bay boat, maybe just a cruising boat, I think this should be on your radar. I really do think that this boat is so versatile and it rides so well and it's so comfortable that I think it would fit a lot of people's needs. I think that this boat is needed on the market. Um, you know, you've got a lot of smaller flats boats and you've got a lot of bigger flats boats by different manufacturers, but out of all of them, I think Hughes probably does it the best and I'm not just biased because I own one. I've seen them, I've seen the finish work. The, everything down to the, the notes of like the non-skid. I like a traditional sprayed on non-skid. Um, Every, I really couldn't have done anything different on this boat to make it more fitting for what I do on a daily basis. Um, the beam alone, fishing with chartered clients and everything like that, I feel like there's plenty of space for us to walk around each other. I'm constantly baiting hooks and netting fish. And I think all of that goes into the bigger picture of how this boat suits me. And uh, overall, like I said, I think Hughes really knocked it out of the park on this one. and. Uh, I know I'm probably gonna say this and maybe it'll happen one day, but I'm gonna run this boat to Bimini one day. Uh, I know it has the capability, I know it has the range, and uh, I know it's got a reliable engine, that Yamaha, I mean, I wouldn't have anything else. I've been in some pretty nasty situations and I've never been let down by that Yamaha. Yeah, overall, I'm just really happy. Uh, can't, can't wait to fish it more and uh, got a lot of really cool videos coming with this boat, so. Um, Stay tuned for those, obviously.
Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's kind of short and sweet, just to basically give you a rundown of the new boat. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you guys have a flats boat or if you guys are thinking about buying a boat like this, I'd love to know maybe what you would do different or what you like about this boat in particular, but uh, I, I would really love some feedback from you guys in the comments below on what you guys think of the boat. Like I said, I'm super stoked with it. Uh, I plan to make a lot of memories on this boat, make a lot of money with this boat. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Oh,